The story behind my bucket shot starts in 2019. That's when I decided to go on my biggest adventure. Six months by myself in the African bush. It was the adventure of a lifetime, but I had to have a um, project for that trip, and that project was getting full frontal portraits of wild lions from Botswana. I had very little experience with wildlife photography, but a good adventure definitely needed an ambitious project. I made a 10 episode series from those six months that you can watch after this. So to keep a long story short, six months later, I got back to Norway and the pandemic hit and I had got a chance to have a look at my photos. When you're on this adventure, you want to spend all your time soaking in the experience. So I didn't really have a proper look at all the photos. Of course, I went through them and made sure that I had something to work with, but these weren't exactly how I had imagined completing this project, so I was a little bit disappointed. I had of course had a great experience I would never be without, but not that one photo I had imagined. I just didn't get it. I knew that I had to go back and complete this project and get that one line photo. The plan was to go back ASAP to get it and hopefully complete this photo project. We had a better plan now that I was more familiar with the different areas of interest a better car and better gear and also with my girlfriend. She was with me for one of those two months. And I had the first two weeks to myself to explore the northern parts of Botswana close to the Akavango Delta before Ilda would join the adventure and go into the central Kalahari and the Halahadi area where I knew there would be good chances of finding those big black maned lions. And the story of how I got my best lion portrait to date really starts on New Year's Eve of 2020. We were six people camping together in a place called Mabua Sehube, one of my favorite places. It is a very remote, I think it's at least 70 or 80 kilometers from the nearest village. We had finished eating, we were sitting around the fire, had a nice chat, had some wine and the sun was setting. We were just enjoying this amazing African sunset and it got dark, everybody was a little bit tired. So we were sitting there just quiet and then we heard uh, like a lapping sound, I guess you can say, from where we had put the dishwashing water. We hadn't done the dishes yet. So we, we used our torches and there on the dishwashing water was a tiny female leopard. We didn't want to move because it's a wild animal, even though it's a tiny leopard, it's still a wild animal. And we were just watching, observing this leopard drink her water and then she left us and everyone was wow this is africa how you want to experience africa for sure and we were also a little bit nervous because after all there was a wild animal there so we were starting talking about maybe we should uh, put some more wood on the fire and sit closer to the fire and uh, just rearrange the cars but before we could do anything another animal comes in and this time it was a big lioness. And when a big lioness comes in, you have to keep your cool. And this was Ilda's first time in Africa. And this lioness was maybe four or five meters away from us, also on the dishwashing water. And the only thing we could do was just to keep still, sit in our chairs, stay calm, and do nothing. Because if you do something abrupt or have any sudden moves or start to panic, that can be very dangerous. So we waited for what seemed like an eternity and eventually the lioness got up and left us. Now it's time to go. So we started packing, gathering all our stuff to get into the cars uh, or our tents to enjoy the rest of the night from the safety of our rooftop tents. But the show didn't stop there. And the first big male lion comes into camp. This was my girlfriend's first time in Africa. Talk about baptism by fire. Everybody froze and I've been very close to, to lions many times, but this was not the most pleasant feeling at all. As if a leopard, a lioness and a big male wasn't enough. Two more male lions comes into our camp. Everybody was slowly just backing off the dishwashing water towards the cars that were parked in the, in the back. Three big male lions in our camp on New Year's Eve 2020. 
Happy New Year, people. This is crazy. <laughs> would have woken you up Roger and they had a roaring show for us for three hours on New Year's Eve and that roaring show right there beats any type of fireworks anywhere in the world I can promise you that much and since we had a rooftop tent and we knew there were lions around about we obviously had to be very careful if we had to go to the toilet in the middle of the night but then you have to climb down and do your business and then climb back up again Telte. Nå kommer de på din side, eller på... Not a great idea, as you can see. The next day, on the 1st of January, one of the male lions came back to, I, I don't know, just check on us maybe. We were actually leaving that day to go to Namibia, but I knew I had to go back to Mabua spend time there by myself and try to find these three big males again. But first, a 10 day trip to Namibia to explore the desert before Ilda would leave from Windhoek. And I would have two more weeks to myself to work on and hopefully complete this project. I got some really nice photos from the Namib desert that I'm quite happy with, but I was very excited to go back to Mabua and that's exactly what I did. And I spent nine days there chasing these three males and I had no idea if I would find them again I just knew that I had to try and I was in contact with uh, one of the wildlife rangers there and he said that yeah they are around but they're split and sometimes they come together again to patrol the area apparently they were in the process of taking over that area as their own that would form a very strong pride and that was what I was hoping for as well so to find them and and just observe them doing their thing with marking their territories and of course try to get that uh, that one perfect lion image and i was uh, very lucky i found them all on day one i could not believe my luck so the next Four days, I got up at 4.30 in the morning. I was out tracking them. They were uh, using the roads as lions do, if they can use the roads. So there were fresh track tracks every morning. I was there by myself, hardly anybody around, only one other car, because again, this is a very remote location. So I was tracking them every morning. I got some decent photos, but it wasn't exactly what I, I hoped for. So I, the next morning again, tracked them, tried to find them and one morning everything was perfect and i've become quite well decent i would say at uh, predicting animal behavior as you have to do so you can be ahead of the animal and i knew the area quite well so when i saw they were on the move i could quickly drive to where i thought they would end up so i could get that full frontal portrait and this perfect image or the best image that uh, that I've got of a lion happened on day five one early morning at sunrise one of the three was by himself walking on the road I predicted where approximately this lion would be and how long it would take him to get there so I positioned the car and I got out of the car to just be ready with the, the right uh, lens and the right camera and I remember that I was fumbling around a little bit with the camera looking at the camera and then I looked up and he was right in front of me and that's when I got the picture, the, the best picture that I've ever taken of a wild male lion in the Kalahari. Yeah, I got it, finally, and I was very nervous. So I missed it a little bit before I had to jump back into the car, but I got my one photo. And he was on the move, so I quickly got into the car and drove where I thought he would emerge to go on the road a bit further away like maybe a couple of kilometers so i drove there and positioned myself this time with um, better time and sure enough that's exactly where he emerged just as the sun rose from on the horizon and the light was beautiful and i got my second favorite lion photo and i can't really describe that amazing feeling when you just 
know that you have the money shot or the, the, the shot that you had in mind. When you worked for something for so long, it felt well deserved. And it took me eight months to get this photo. So I guess it goes to show that when you really work for something over a prolonged period of time, that hard work, those early mornings, they pay off. And this is the result. The day after the trial was gone. No tracks, nothing, just gone. I drove every road to try and find tracks or any signs of them. It was as if they were never there. And this was the last shot I got of them. In the bush trotting off, probably to patrol their new kingdom. After a lionless day and the next morning, I was walking around camp and was caught by surprise by three lionesses that stopped by to say hello. I was just about to go there and take some photos, but look. One. Two. Three lioness. In Africa, I guess you have to expect the unexpected. The three brothers were gone for now and I spent the day and the next with the lionesses feeling content that I had got that one photo I would worked so long and so hard for. Worth every early morning and those long weeks and months of patience with a pandemic in between back in Norway. So if you watch this, if you're, you're here, if you're at the end of this video and if you want to do a very ambitious photo project or whatever project you want to do, photo, video, whatever it is. Remember that hard work pays off in the end. And that's all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.